And when you wake up next to him in the middle of the night (laughs) with your head in your hands, you're nothing more than his wife. And then you think about me all those years ago and you're face to face with, I told you so, fucking, what was her name, Rachel? Yeah, something like that. Bitch, actually... But she actually did the damn thing and left. Yeah, truly, truly. So Chapel Chapel Roan would love would love that. Um, I wish someone had told me so that this movie is bad. So, <laughs> uh, hey everyone. Well, here we are. <laughs> hey, hi, welcome to the swamp. It's our podcast, and it's an acronym. Stands for some whack ass movie podcasting. Hey, happy Happy Pride Month! I actually think that we said that the theme of this month was uh, queer rom coms. That we wanted to celebrate some queer joy and not watch movies that are really sad. And we were like, let's do something light and fun, rom coms. No, I think the new theme is um, put this in quotation marks. Gay people can make bad art too. Yes, because two yes. two fucking weeks in a row, bro. Actually, we I'm are sure that this. This movie is made by a straight man, so that actually kind of uh, yeah, explains a lot. Where but... where's Zip? Where no oh, for nil. two weeks. Yeah, oh, for I two. Actually, two I actually, I want to go back. Eggs. At the end of this, I was like, God, I wish we were covering Red, White, and Royal Blue for a second time. Oh my. Is how I felt. <laughs> it, it's, if it couldn't get worse, it actually, it yeah, actually did. Yeah, um... I, in our quest to pick movies this month, I was going back into my um, file of lesbian movies, which is um, far thinner than Mm. it should be. However, I remember a lot of people talking about this movie when I was pretty, like, young and, like, 16 or whatever. I was like, great, fabulous. Um, Let's do this one. It's a classic. Um, Little did I know that... um, all it took to qualify as a lesbian movie was two girls. I mean, they don't even really have to kiss. They don't have to have any connection, <laughs> any chemistry. Um, they don't even have to talk to each other. This was actually just the first movie ever that had two women in it um, at the same yeah. time. And they were like, well, this has to be gay, right? S- something. Yeah. Um, yeah, this movie's from 2005, and I will give it a little bit of grace, and I also will give a little perspective that I, I do think I understand. If you saw this movie at either a critical time mm-hmm. or, like, a critical turning point in your own, like, queer journey, I could see how the content of this movie could be really impactful. And it's also a story about two women who fall in love and nothing bad happens to them. Everyone in their life is for the most part, fairly supportive. Mm -hmm. They get together. They Mm -hmm. get to be together. The movie ends happy ending. Yeah. Queer, queer love. Woo. Big win. That is not the case for like any other queer media. So I can see this being, and especially this came out in 2005. So I could see that for a while, this movie could be a nice little safe haven for if you're in the mood to watch, a queer film, but not one that is so fucking sad. Yeah. Like, I could see how, if you really like this movie, how that could have maybe occupied that spot. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think your letterbox review perfectly sums it up that, like, thank God we have more than this. Yeah. Now. Well, it's just, it's, it's not even gay. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it is, but it isn't. And of course, it is obviously made by a straight man. Um, I almost wish, this is going to sound so bad, I almost wish it was a man that was, like, objectifying lesbians, because at least it would have been hot. This is yeah, a right. sexless, sexless movie. Celibate. <laughs> like, like Barbie doll, no pussy. You know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> oh my mine god. Sh- but, um, mine shrank back into my stomach and closed up. Right. <laughs> Just zipped. <laughs> sealed. <laughs> We cauterized the wound. She's exactly. Closed. She's yeah. Closed yeah. Off. Nary a trace of my previous life. Can I, well wait? Let me say the name of the film. Hi. If you can't read, <laughs> uh, we're we're covering the 2005 movie Imagine Me and You. It's a rom com directed by the same guy who did Mamma Mia 2. Here we go again. Which is crazy. Um, and like that's it. Those are those. That's his discography, which is kind of wild. Well, at least he um, made that one sexy. Yeah, yeah, right. He it's hard. To, it's hard to follow up Mamma Mia one um, with an equally sexy movie, but I think he managed. Um, I've never seen it, so I have no. Really, thoughts, but it's, yeah. For a sequel, it's decent, and obviously Cher is there. Cher, yeah, yeah, yeah. of course. Um, um, but this movie, a crazy thing about it is, you mentioned how sexless it is. This is a rated R. This film is 
R rated because it came out in 2005 and it was about a gay couple. Yeah. I'm sorry, lesbians. Mm. Lesby friends, as of they call them yeah. in the film. Um, this is an R rated film and that really perplexed That's me nuts. because they hardly swear. There's on screen kissing for not a lot. I think the riskiest thing that happens is the married straight couple. Mm-hmm. What like she wants to have sex in the woods? Yeah, and she to like be risky to reinvigorate their failing marriage, uh-huh. and they like bump into another couple who happen to be yeah. gay men who are also having sex in the woods. That is about as close as this movie gets Absolutely. to deserving it an R rating. And like a it's, child wouldn't recognize what was happening. It's crazy that this movie is is. The Saw films, bro? You're telling me this is the same as the Saw films? No. <laughs> no. This movie, I was like, this is even pushing PG-13. This is literally like a PG film. Yep. It's just about fucking people going to the grocery store and then doing nothing and they have no personality and they just go places and talk to each other. That's mm-hmm. that's it. That's the whole fucking thing. Nothing happens. There's no sex. There's no on-screen sex at all. Even not even like alluded to. No, it's yeah. This movie is dry. Oh yeah, it's which is crazy because Lena Headey is so fucking hot. Her little low rise, the jeans lowest jeans. Lower, I mean, like her lower back tattoo. I'm barking. They could have at that's... least like shown some pubes like popping Ugh. out of the jeans. You know what I mean? Oh my god, some crap so, like something. Sigourney Weaver. It. You know what mm. I mean? Um, nothing. It was. And like I said, I can understand that um, for its time, it was probably like a beacon of hope for lesbians. Mm-hmm. Um, it was just brutal to watch. It took me, um, it's one of those films that took me d- <clears throat> double the time it should have because I kept pausing it because I got distracted by like anything else was mm-hmm. more interesting. There was... yeah. No chemistry between either of the actresses. Um, the Which is story- crazy, because they're both fucking tens. Yeah. They're both hot oh, as yes. both- I don't know so much about Miss... What's her name? Piper Parabo? Yeah. I don't know so much about her. She was, like, mid. Her accent was kind of botched. Yeah. Lena Headey is a fucking phenomenal actress. She Powerhouse. Really and I'm like, you can't find chemistry with this woman? Are you fucking kidding me? And it's crazy, because I... Found myself. You know your lesbian movie is bad when I, as a queer woman, am more interested in the man than the women. <laughs> Not heck. Not heck. And they named him Heck. I felt <laughs> like he was my preferred character in all of this, which is well, that's horrific. Cause- it's because this movie is made by a man, so of course the actual sort of perspective we get, well, the only real point of view we get is about how he feels about all of this. Why is he so redeemable? We can get into we can get into the plot and, it, the, and the men and how it is, but this movie's more about him than anything. It feels like this is just something that happened very specifically to the director, and this mm. was his way of working through it. Yeah. Um and but I take offense to that because now I watched his terrible lesbian movie. Yeah, that's actually why this episode is a little late this week because uh, we both just fell asleep. Uh, yeah. We just both <laughs> fell asleep while watching the film, and that's why you know we ha- couldn't even record the podcast because no. we were both just snoozing I was for, out. Fucking, for forty-eight hours after this. Mm-hmm. I needed to like manually factory reset my body because right? of how fucking bored I was. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I felt but more proud at a a baseball game i felt i was at the gay red Sox game the other day and that made me feel gayer than this movie oh that's so nice it was cute i went with my dad Aww, did he have a hot dog i did i had two hot dogs oh i love that for you yeah i don't like sports but i do like to drink in public it's um, not so. as bad honestly i will say and this is for anyone that's um intrigued and likes sports sports but doesn't want to actually like do them baseball is not that bad these days because they added like a pitch clock so the pitchers only have like 30 seconds to like go through and throw their balls or whatever and so instead of taking five hours to have a full game it's like two and a half it's a breeze yeah it's like a movie exactly not bad at all i'm in and out of there i still wouldn't go but that is a fairly good pitch 
Uh, but here's a, here's another bad pitch. If you haven't seen this movie, imagine me and you, 2005. It is a rom-com about um, this lesbian couple, but, oh no, one of them is married. So yeah. Rachel, it is her wedding day, and she's marrying Heck. And the two of them seem very happy, compatible. They're best friends. They've been together for a long time. They get married, and everything is great. The florist of their wedding is Lena Headey. Loose. That is her. I'm going to try to use their character names. Luce and Rachel and Heck are the yeah. three protagonists. And so Luce is the florist, and she makes eye contact with the bride as she's walking down the mm-hmm. aisle. And snap. Love at first sight. They're both like, Snail Damn. trail as she walks. She, she's got it. And afterwards, they sort of talk a little bit, some friendly banter, and then that's it. You know, it's the wedding. It's over. Uh, the bride, Rachel, she comes back to Luce's flower shop the next couple of weeks or whatever she's like hey you should come have dinner you know you seem really nice we're about the same age you should come have dinner with me and my husband which is so like it's so i will say that's one thing it's so gay of her to go out of her way to be like "Mm, i'm just gonna stop by i don't know why i just feel like i want to and i want to i'm gonna set up loose with this boy that's friends with my husband um, which which is the worst part of this whole film, if you ask me, is that they use this other male character named is it a Cooper? What is Coop, yeah. Coop. They use the one of the husband's friends, Coop, as they're like, Oh, that's an excuse for us to invite you places loose as you could you could be sort of like a double date for Coop mm-hmm. and we can all hang out. Mm-hmm. And she which so surprising to me, she immediately gets to the dinner party, realizes the situation, and says to the husband, oh, I am I am gay. I like women. I'm a lesbian. Mm-hmm. That's just to get that out there. And he says, like, oh, okay, good for you. This isn't going to work out then. And then it's this whole thing where Coop continues to, like, just try to wear Lewis down to be like, yeah, you're gay and that's cool and everything, but I'm going to keep shooting my shot. Yeah. I could not tell if it was, like, a joke. If he was like, ha, 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 I'm supportive, but, like, yeah, you still want to fuck me, right? Ha, ha. Or if he genuinely was like, no, you're going to want to fuck me eventually. I don't know. I could not I could not get a read on whether that was sinister or not. I was waiting for it to turn because throughout the movie they, like, hang out a couple of times, which I'm like, why are you continuing to socially entertain this man who's being either just objectively not very fun about your sexuality or is like being super gross and being like yeah. I can turn you straight which is so icky yeah. I could not get a read the writing and the acting was so vague Bad. and nondescript that I couldn't even figure out whether it was an objective like him going after her or like him being a jokey kind of thing mm-hmm. I think in a little bit we're gonna get into where we think this movie could use for improvement and I do think that relationship was a, there's this huge black hole of like why are we spending time on this yeah but basically now Luce is somewhat integrated into their social circle. They keep kind of bumping into each other in places. And Rachel is kind of realizing, oh, I have this sort of deep, unignorable feeling of lesbian attraction mm-hmm. for this person. And I'm trying really hard to push it down, but it's just is interfering with my marriage and my day-to-day life. And there are a couple instances where they, like, almost kiss or they have, like, sort of a charged moment and then they pull apart a handful of times. And then eventually... Uh, Rachel admits to her husband, who is blackout drunk, everything. She's like, yeah, I think this, you know, this marriage is not gonna work because I'm in love with someone else and I didn't mean for it to happen, but it just sort of happened to me. And he's fucking cocked. Yeah. He's drunk. Don't do that. That is no. really irresponsible and kind of fucked up if <laughs> that's you decide fu- that's to, That's fucked like, up of you. Yeah, to, like, while your partner is, like, clearly so inebriated they can't stand, to be like, hey, I'm gonna introduce the topic of divorce mm-hmm. right now. That's, I think, is a good time That's like that. Yeah, that's a great way to get someone to kill themselves, so. Right, yeah, literally. Um, but, so, basically, Hank is kind of, like, he heard it. Like, he, he heard it, but he didn't fully process it, but he, like, got it, and she doesn't know that. Yeah. So then she walks away, and he sort of, like, says to her, like, well, I just want you to be happy, and if I'm not the person who's going to do that for you, you kind of need to go out in the world and, yeah. and go after this person. Yeah, she, he, like. You know, I don't. He's, he's like, I don't love it. He's like, yeah. I'm he's like, I'm upset and I'm heartbroken, but like you need to do what you need to do, which is like the most possible best exactly. most supportive outcome if that could have ever happened, especially in 2005. You know, I would say that that's like a one percent chance. Yeah. Like a good a good thirty to fifty percent is that he like fucking kills her on yeah. sight. Like for real. And that's why um, that's why like heck is the character that I'm like, oh shit, okay, I can get down with you. Cause he also like I feel like had a personality. I had, like, an understanding of who this guy was. And they Mm -hmm. gave him, like, some character. They gave both of the men, like, discernible personalities. The women, no idea. 
Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Nothing other than that Luce is gay. That's mm-hmm. what we know. She's yep. a lesbian. Yep. That is it. That is she. And she's a florist. She has a job and she has a sexuality. Mm-hmm. Done. Lives with her uh, mom, I think, right? Yeah, yeah. Lives Something with her like mom. that. Rach? Rachel? Rachel? Not a clue. She... Also, she has a job. We don't even know what it is. She just is sitting in an office at one point. That's that's it. That's it. And that she is a woman. Those are the two things about Rachel that we know, which is awesome. And then basically what happens is Luce is like, I don't want to ruin your marriage. This makes me feel icky. I'm going to go on a long trip, sort Mm -hmm. myself out. We never have to see each other again. At the very turning point where Rachel realizes this is something I can pursue, she's Mm -hmm. like, I have to stop Luce before she gets on the plane, Mm -hmm. waiting in traffic, very dramatic, very by-the-books rom-com moment. Mm -hmm where she realizes that Luce is up ahead of her in traffic. So she gets out, stands on top of the car, and yells, like, hey, c- get out here and love You're me You're a wanker number nine, which is, like, a reference like, to something earlier that happened cute in the little, movie. Cute little flirtation. Uh. And then Luce gets out of the car, and they reunite, and they realize that they can be together. Done whatever that's that's the movie it's a very it's a very by the books rom-com but i do think the thing that bothered me the most is that we don't get anything about these women it is about it's about heck for the most part that's that's the real perspective here is what would it be like to be to be a man in this situation mm -hmm. is where this movie was coming from and if it's a rom-com about these women make it about the women i want to know why they like each other i have no clue why they like each other All of the, like, weird tension that they tried to set up didn't stick because the entire first half of the movie, these two women hardly say a word to each other the entire time until, heck, which also, the fact that none of these people have full names in this movie bothers the shit out of me. Luce, Luce, Rach, and Coop. Yeah, (laughs) horrific. Um, But... The fact that you get halfway through this movie and you don't understand why either of these women like each other. You can understand that they're attracted to each other, sure. But, like, it seems like they can't stay away from each other. But there's nothing there pulling them together until Heck, like, tells Luce, oh, in, in, as in, like, like, a 1930s scenario, oh, will you accompany my wife? To a soccer game? Uh, will you look after my wife? Yeah, I'm literally. On a business call? Like, okay. Also, like, heck, you set this up, so you can't even be mad. Like, the only thing that I can say is relatable about this is there's one scene um, where I think it's Ray- Rachel is, like, um, staring at Luce during some sort of little space presentation or whatever, and the world seems to, like, stop moving and all that stuff, and I'm like, okay, that's fair. This man at least understands what it feels like to stare at a beautiful woman. (laughs) You got that much. You got that! And that was it. Like, oh my god. I don't want to even get a drink with either of these two women. No, which is crazy. Which because, is crazy. Like, I want to watch. Save me. I want to watch me. Lena Headey, who owns a plant shop. I want to watch porn with Heck. That's yeah. what I want to do. <laughs> Honestly, that did seem like a better a better time. That whole subplot too was so wild that she like gets lesbian porn and to see how it makes her oh feel, and then he like catches her, and he's like, "No, that is also the best possible response." Like literally, Heck just knocks it out of the park every time. He's like, "Yeah." I think it would be kind of fun if we watched lesbian yeah. porn together. Oh my god! Like, can't, maybe you should consider hold, hanging on to him. Rachel, uh, truly, because well, it's just, maybe Heck could just open the marriage up or something. Heck seems kind of open minded. I'm not gonna lie to you. It's crazy because even yes. like considering that this was made from a man's point of view, I feel like a man's point of view would still be typically worse than what is portrayed on screen. But mm-hmm. like, truly, Heck did. Everything right that he could. Yeah. Which made the movie so bland and uninteresting because there was nary a conflict. No. And I'm I'm not saying that Coop needed to hate crime loose in order for this movie to be interesting. <laughs> I'm not going to take away the fact that this movie is at its core very wholesome, pure, objectively happy, a by the books rom-com. But there needs to be... Not even conflict, just tension coming from somewhere. I mean, even the stupid, like, if you've ever seen Love Actually, probably the dumbest plot in it is that Colin Firth 
has fallen in love with this girl who doesn't speak English because they're in like Portugal or something like that. And so he learns, ends up learning Portuguese for her and she starts learning English for him. They have never spoken a word to each other until the night he proposes to her once he's learned enough Portuguese. And that is still a better plot than this movie. Yikes. Which, yeah. that brings us to kind of you texting me and let me know that mm -hmm. you were going to ask what I would change to make this movie yeah. more compelling. Because to me, this movie is honestly kind of a perfect blank slate. If Absolutely. I was given this screenplay as like, here's our jumping off point, I would say there's a lot to do with this. We just need to add some things because I think at its bones, if you want to make a really happy, joyful, you know, figuring out your sexuality, lesbian love story, mm -hmm. I think that that can be something that's really positive. But the women need to have personalities, yep. maybe even uh, jobs. I mean, Luce owns her little flower shop, which is very, a lot of stuff takes place in in the flower shop but like give rachel a job a hobby just even a real something. one show me her knitting just, yeah <laughs> show me her sauteing zucchini anything show me something anything uh but yeah so i did text you like if you could change something or if you could just like alter some sort of situation in this movie add something like what what do you think we could do to sort of elevate this spice it up a little bit i think it would be fun to give them like a Sarah Paulson Holland Taylor age gap kind of thing. Ooh. I think that would be really okay. great and add an entire different mm. level to it. Either um Luce is I don't know which would be better if I think Luce should be older. Yeah. I think like an older Luce lady was... running a flower shop and she's mm. like, Why is my pussy but she's throbbing at this she's way? A... Yeah. Milf. Um I also think if we want to go in a more comedic route, I think giving Luce um really stupid anger issues would be very funny. Okay. Yeah, like, see her get really upset about, like, something ridiculous or, like, well, road rage. Or even just show any emotion. because That would be that ideal. Sort of, the scene that sort of perplexed me the most is the grocery shopping scene. First of all, just the classic, like, two people having a conversation while grocery shopping mm -hmm. in a movie and they're just, like, picking random things off the shelves. Yeah. Like, not... I'm like, where's your list? Yeah. Where are you? You're... That, this is not a productive <clears throat> Costco visit for you mm -hmm. right now. Be fucking for real. But... Uh, Heck and Rachel bump into Luce and her friend uh, at the grocery store, and they're just like, oh, so surprised to see you here. And Heck knows that Luce is a lesbian, but Rachel does not at this time. And they see, he sees her with another woman. He's like, oh, are you two together? And I, I actually did really like the line, like, are you gay? Yeah, I'm ecstatic. Like, I thought that was <laughs> yeah. That was pretty funny. But he sees, you know, there are two lesbian women hanging out, and he's kind of like, oh, let me poke and prod at this for a second. And he's like, she's like, oh, we're not together because Luce is, is really in love with someone else or mm -hmm. whatever, which I'm like already applying that that's crazy. Like, what that is about. Insane. But even if we had, if, if they had been a couple, right, mm -hmm. if she also was part of a couple that got break up, broken up or if she had her, her other lesbian friend who was like, like, damn girl, you really got to stay away from this straight woman. Like you always go for, you know, a, some sort of interaction between the two of them that wasn't just both like just two queer women anything. standing next to each other. So we have to be together. Like, developing that friendship, even just, like, a little few lines of dialogue to just, yeah, maybe make her angry. Be, like, make her pissed off about something. I don't know. But my you? big thing, yeah. my big thing I would change, as I alluded to before, is that I would have, like, the relationship between Luce and Coop to have gone into sort of an unexpected direction where they become unlikely friends. Mm. I think that could have added which, something. Because that's what it which seemed almost, to be trying to do, but it didn't get there. We can clean that up because we got this sort of initial situation where they meet at the wedding. He's mm -hmm. like, damn, she's really hot. Yeah. They then set the two of them up together, realize it's not going to work because Luce is gay. Luce is like, hey, I'm gay. He's like, well, you're still going to come have dinner with me. Like, we're still, I'm still going to romantically pursue you in a joking way. But I couldn't tell, like, negging, in negging in 2005, <sighs> was that serious or was who that a knows? joke? Like, are we in the, the post-ironic negging flirting I situation? I truly, who can say? I don't know anything, but I think if it had got to the point, if we had gotten there a little quicker and Luce could have been like, hey, like, I see 
that there is good in you, but just the way you speak to women is kind of off-putting. And as a lesbian, I'm gonna, like, give you some honest, objective advice of the way you tried to, like, mm-hmm. woo me, mm-hmm. and maybe let's work on that together. Yeah. I don't know, maybe, like, helping, helping, because did you watch the post credit scenes? No, I didn't. So there I turned it off as fast as possible. It's crazy. So this movie has a little post credit bit, which is so unnecessary and honestly kind of ruins some stuff, but... It shows Heck on a plane, and he's going to go write his travel book. Sure. And he's really post-divorce. He's just going to... And he makes eye contact with a girl on the plane, and they have their little moment. They have their falling in love at first sight moment. So he connects with somebody on on the airplane, and, you, oh, maybe everything's going to be all right for Heck. Okay. Yeah. I wasn't fucking worried about him anyways. He no. was going to be fine. But anyways, thank God we knew that. They show Coop with a baby... Just to let us know, just to let us know that he, he did that. Okay. Right. Sure. Great. Um, and then they also showed the child with a boy to show that the child found love as well. Great. Sure. Which is also insufferable. I was, I would cut that kid from this whole fucking movie. I fucking hated that child. I didn't hate it. I hated that child. So in my, okay, my change is that Coop is going to get a, a makeover from Luz. He's yeah. gonna get a full turnaround, how to respect women. Yeah, literally. And then maybe and then maybe he actually does find someone uh-huh. nice and respectable and it's like, oh my god, thank you so much for I hope it's a woman that a puts him in this place. Right, something. I don't know. Literally give me anything. <clears throat> but my second thing is I'm gonna fucking cut this kid out of this movie. I don't care why she was Rachel's younger sister, which also I, I was like, no is that idea. a niece? I is ha- that I- a is I couldn't it's like a tell. random child um, who's just always around who only spoke <laughs> In, like, you know those boomer memes, like, of the minions? Yeah. And it'll be, like, a minion boomer meme uh-huh. that says, like, you know, don't talk to me until I've had my coffee or mm-hmm. something like that. That's just, like, the way this child always spoke is, like, what happens when an unstoppable force meets an immovable object? Am I right, guys? Yeah. Like, what the fuck? Are you- You're nine. Like, are you good, bro? I hated that fucking yeah. kid. <clears throat> so precocious, meddling. Also, why is Luce, like, volunteering at, I this don't ch- know. Ch- at this girl's school? I don't know. That's so weird. Um, I'm also gonna tell you that you should recast it, and instead of... What's her name? Piper? Yeah, Piper um, Robbo. Yeah, instead of Piper, um, I'm gonna just tell you to throw Jennifer Gardner in there because for years that's who I thought played her anyways. Um, Which is not the case, but I think that there would be better chemistry at the very least between Jennifer Gardner and Lena Headey. I almost felt like it wasn't even their fault that there was no chemistry. No, I don't think so. The the script didn't even provide them with an opportunity, again, to explain why they liked each other. Exactly. I think think we got sparks of chemistry of, like, at the football game when she's like, put your other hand there, too. Or, like, little moments like that 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 it did shine through that I was like, this could possibly work. It's just that this... This story isn't giving us anywhere to go. Like, even these two women could be literally married in real life. Mm-hmm. And I just would never know because we're just not exploring anything about them. Exactly. Um, another I, thing I would... Oh, no, 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 you. I was just going to say, another thing I would change, uh, two things. The rating. Why is this movie rated R? Mm-hmm. I'm changing that. The movie poster perplexed me because upon a cursory glance... It seems like this movie is explained top to bottom in the movie poster. It shows a bride and a groom together, and then Coop and Luce back mm-hmm. to back. And it's like the two girls are holding hands behind the back. But it basically shows what appears to be two heterosexual couples yeah. with the girls like sneakily holding hands behind the backs mm-hmm. or whatever. But... Luce and Coop are not a couple. No, and well, it's like never Luce's a hand. It's like Coop's hand is like basically on her ass, and that's about it. Yeah, but that whole thing was never an issue or explored enough to be a major plot point. He was literally just there. Why is he on the movie cover? It should have been like Luce with like a bouquet of flowers or something. Like, yeah. why is Coop even there? Because this movie to me looks like two straight couples, and the women realize that they're both gay exactly. and both have to navigate within their straight relationships how to. That's not what this movie's about. That's half no. of what this movie's about. But Lena Headey's character is an out lesbian who says that very objectively from the very start of the film. She's like, no, I'm gay. I don't have to figure that Mm -hmm. out about myself. I know that about myself. I like women. I'm a lesbian. Mm -hmm. 
that to me was kind of powerful because I feel like so many, this movie included so many queer stories are about like figuring it out, quote mm-hmm. unquote, like coming out or figuring out your sexuality. I liked that we just got introduced to her and she's like, no, I'm gay. Yeah. Like that's, that's, we can, and the fact that her character didn't go anywhere after that, we already got that from the jump and mm-hmm. we didn't get anything after that. So fucking annoying. Yeah. But yeah, the, this movie poster, I was like, what the fuck is, like, I really that- felt like this was trying to sell something. To that it was and then presented something entirely different. Yeah, I will also say it was an entirely like missed opportunity to show Lena Headey's lower back tattoo, um, oh. because she's in the tiniest little low rise jeans, mm. midriff poking out, and you know what's there instead? Coop's hand. Move it. Bullshit. Evaporate. <laughs> um, Man. The only thing I will say about this movie that I do enjoy is that it feels very much like a 2000s time capsule, w- mm. which is partly the lower back tattoo, um, yep. the low rise jeans, of course, that fuck ass tiny beanie. Beanie, that the beanie, she's the beanie with the little with lip. Little lip um, which I have I, one. Did you have one? I did eventually. It took ages to manage mm. to get it. Um, and then, like, the weird 2000s filter that you could only really tell, like, was on in the grocery store scene. Yes. I wrote down that this movie was, uh, the cinematography was done by Getty Images. Yeah! This, every scene looked like a fucking stock photo. Mm-hmm. I was like, what is this, like, weird, like, blanket lighting, like, solid wall of light? Just, like, all the colors are Crazy. at full saturation. Yeah. Like, it was just so weird. Uh-huh. And, yeah, they would, occasionally they would put a weird bullshit, like, piss filter <laughs> on just some of the scenes. Exactly. Like, the, scene, the scene in the grocery store looked like it was from an entirely different movie yep. than, say, the scene, you know, at the football game versus the scenes in their house mm-hmm. versus the Christmassy, snowy type. You know, it all felt, like, connected that it was all very bland. But disjointed in the way that I'm like, who is making these choices? Yeah. Question to make, and this isn't easy for me to say, but it's something that I've been coming around to for a long time now, and I just want to come clean that I don't think you can make the perfect grilled cheese sandwich without mayonnaise. That's fair, yeah. You need butter and you need mayonnaise. The butter's optional. And... If you want to be a glutton, you can do you can do butter in the pan, mayo on the gonna bread. I going to say... That's if you're if you're really getting into it. Not me complaining about having acid reflux for the past twenty minutes to my mom before we hopped on this call, and then me being like, "No, you need butter and mayonnaise on your grilled cheese." In your whole life, I never put mayo on your grilled cheeses. I know, and I got no. Complaints. My mom was also that way. Why? Why? Where do you put the mayo on the bread? Outside, on the yeah. outside of the bread. No, that's that's a hard no for me. Yeah, no, See, it's Jen, the best. It's the perfect crust. It is. It really is. I have to give it to Dara there. Mm-hmm. Um, Jen, do you just, like, let the butter melt in the pan and then throw the grilled cheese on, or do you butter the cheese, or the um, bread? Butter, bread? Butter the bread. Butter the bread. Lots of butter. I don't know. Right. I gotta, I, I th- maybe it's a generational thing, because yeah. I think that most people in Gen Z would agree that mayo on the grilled cheese is the way And Dara, you don't even eat mayo. No, I fucking hate, hate mayo. mayo. That's why I'm saying it. It's such a, this is such a confession for me because I don't like, I don't really like mayo, but. I'm the same it's, way. It's a, it's a crucial ingredient in a good grilled cheese. But, I'm having horrible acid reflux right now and I decided to have tomato soup for dinner. <laughs> what the, the fuck most is wrong with me? The acidic thing you can fucking find. I'm, so if you hear me, like, fighting for my life, like, groaning to try to stifle a burp, <laughs> that's where I'm at right now. Mm. I Not to get TMI about my body, but I have, like, I have breasts, if anyone didn't know that about me, is that I have them, and they're of the kind of heavier uh, proportional <laughs> size, but for some reason, I get acid reflux, like, a lot, like, I'm a Tums girly, mm-hmm. but I always think that, like, lifting them will alleviate my acid reflux, so I'm, like, pacing around the kitchen having my post grilled cheese and tomato soup acid reflux moment, like gripping my boobs. And Henry's like, what is going on with you right now? Like, are you good? And I'm like, no, I just need to alleviate the acid reflux. It doesn't help. It doesn't help, but I still do it. Also, another thing I never tell you, I'm telling you to take baking soda or Tums or something. And you're like, no, why don't I just 
hoist up my boobs. Like, <laughs> just need to get that weight off my chest, you know? I, I don't know. Anyways, uh, this is not a Zoom call with your healthcare practitioner. This is a Zoom call with my healthcare practitioner mother, Jen. <laughs> She's here to uh, do chocolate or vanilla, her interim podcast segment. She's going to say two things. We're all going to say which one we like better. Jen, what is the theme this week? So I, I had a theme and then I switched it up. I, I was hungry, so it's food. It's just all food. Oh, oh God. God. You're coming. <laughs> I'm, I've am i like, just before hopping on this call, I've prepped everything that I need to for ramen so that afterwards oh. I can just like mm. throw it all together. Um, but I'm coming so in waiting. starving. So <laughs> I Rough. had one of those days too. So this is this is a food version. Great, I love these ones. Chocolate or vanilla? Chocolate. Uh, vanilla. Yeah, I'm gonna go vanilla today. Oh wow! Yeah. Um, first one: enchilada or burrito? Burrito. Enchilada is good, but it's messy, and a burrito can be mobile. It can be stationary. A burrito contains so many multitudes that enchilada has the sauce on it. It's basically like a skinny burrito. Uh, yeah, you can hear me googling. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's also got like extra cheese. I remember, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and that's my thing. I think a burrito mm. is gonna be messy most of the time, anyways. And it's fucked up if I eat a burrito with a fork and a knife. But it's not fucked up if I eat an enchilada with a fork and a knife. Um, so true. I'm going to go enchilada. Okay, I'm, I'm going to go uh, burrito. Uh, next one, hot honey or honey mustard? Hot honey is a fucking psyop. Hot honey is a fucking industry plant psyop in the past three years. Where the fuck did hot honey come from? I've never Riddle eaten me it. That. It's on every fucking pizza at every bullshit gastro pub in the nation who's mike riddle me that i don't know a goddamn thing it's in my fridge right now that's how much i've bought it and i'm part of the problem what's my other option though i'm picking that honey mustard, uh, honey mustard. oh yeah I, I don't really fuck with mustard but i do like honey mustard on a chicky tendy Oof. you keep your yeah. hot or well first sorry you keep your honey in the fridge <laughs> yeah why is that is that weird? I keep all my sauces in the fridge. I want my sauce to be cold. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's fair enough. But, I like, honey is already difficult enough to work with that making it even, like, more solidified just yeah. seems like you're really... You're gonna break some spoons. I think that would be good if you are, like, making sort of your own kind of, um, like, chili crunch. If you want to make it a little sweet. Mm. Um... Mm-hmm. But what's yeah, a chili, what's a chili crunch? It's like um, like uh, chili flakes and like garlic, and it's like, it's like a little like olive oily sauce that you okay. put on like a lot of Asian foods. Okay. Um, but I am a honey mustard girl, ride or die. That has been my sauce since the youngest I can remember. Um, I think it's the best sauce for attendee. So, mm-hmm. honey mustard. Mm-hmm. Especially yeah, like a same. good one that you can like tell it was actually made with real honey, mm-hmm. and it's not like Ken's. No, I love. I, Ken's. Don't get me wrong. Do not get me wrong. I love Ken's, but like I'm thinking of the Chick Fil A honey mustard. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's just sure. a step above. If, I like the Ken's Ken, though. Ken, if you're listening, Ken, I will <laughs> drink a whole bottle of Ken's Italian. On a live stream, if we can get a, some sort of brand deal with Ken's, I fucking love Ken's salad dressing. It's so good. Absolutely. True. There's no other way. I'm a fucking true-blooded American. Uh, uh, I, put, if you were a, I put Ken's. If you were a true-blooded American, I feel like Newman's own would be. No, fuck that guy. Ken. <laughs> <laughs> Ken's honey mustard for the win. Uh, next one. Blueberry or lemon? Lemon. Uh, the lemon, the lemon sheet cake from Trader Joe's. It's a seasonal oh, item. Oh my god. Uh, it's, it's new. It's a new seasonal item. I love the Chantilly cream vanilla bean sheet cake, but now there's a lemon one as well. It's incredibly fire. N- no notes. That's lemon. like the thing that, maybe I'll do this sometime. Like going to Trader Joe's a little stoned and you get every thing you could want for your munchies. 
That is something Ooh. I would destroy in one sitting easily. Well, it's super rich actually, so you really only take three or four bites and you're like, damn, I'm sad. Yeah, which is kind of But nice like, you know, when you're stoned dessert. and your stomach, like, the bottom drops out. <laughs> and then you just have acid reflux for a month and a half. Yeah. You wake up with a stomach ache the next day. <laughs> I am a lemon girl. I love lemon anything. Um, I'm adding it to every drink that I have, so. Nice. I am going to go lemon, too. So, did you guys know Pepperidge Farm makes a blueberry lemon bread? It's like, you know how you would make cinnamon swirl bread? Oh! It's blueberry oh. lemon. Well, oh, is it any good? It was, I feel like that has, the, that has the potential to be god-awful. It I thought it was going to be weird, and it wasn't bad. But I I liked the idea of it, but I I don't know. Well, listen to was... this. I've seen some of those, like, real slutty little creative cooking TikTokers. They've been making, um, like, blueberry rolls instead of cinnamon rolls. And so that you make, like, a nice little, like, blueberry jam or compo, oh, and you put it in that. Oh, and you, That's, like, oh, the swirl that, that you have. With really lemon good. frosting. Yeah. Oh, my mm-hmm. God. And wow. it's, like, the oh, sexiest, really like, good. fluffiest pastry you've ever seen. And I'm, like, I'd bite off my fingers for that. This is not going to be good to listen to if you're hungry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah. If you're on your commute to work and you skipped breakfast, oh my God. you might want to click away. <laughs> One time me and Dara made a recipe with lemon curd, and that lemon curd came out so good. Right, Dara? You made your so own? Good. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. We DIY'd that cool. shit. We were... We were Bulling from scratch. It was um, And it was pretty difficult. Yeah, we yeah. had to, like, siphon it, throw a fucking strainer yeah, in the bet. mesh. And it was, a, it was a lot of work, but it was good. The, the one you can get at the store is just about as good. I'm sure. Yeah, true. Um, next one is monkey bread or garlic bread? Garlic bread. Mm-hmm. I don't have anything against monkey bread, personally. Um, but... Yeah. It's not the thing that I'm yeah. gonna pick, you know what I mean? Garlic bread I love stands eat. the biggest chance out of almost any sort of bread to be picked as my number one. Yeah, that's so true. Yeah, I'll I'll go garlic bread too. Although on one of the Food Network shows I saw them make a monkey bread that was like savory, so it was like pull apart garlic bread. Oh I feel like that's inherently not monkey. Yeah. That's I That's think it was else. the Girl Meets Farm Girl. Next one. <laughs> Strawberry jalapeno chicken or peach balsamic grilled chicken? I'll go with the peach balsamic because that sounds a little safer. Strawberry? It That sounds weird to me. I don't know, man. You'd have to really... Strawberry jalapeno sounds good for like a margarita yeah. or like, I don't know, something. But on a chicken, I don't really know if I want that. Yeah, that's a little much. I could see you having like grilled chicken in your little strawberry um salad, salad. yeah your strawberry yeah. spinach goat mm-hmm. cheese salad that makes sense to my brain but if it's like marinated almost or something no i'm good but like a balsamic chicken i like and i think peach would be peach and balsamic are absolutely great together next one caprese salad or cowboy burger i'm i'm a sicko i'm kind of a sick fucked up person and as an adult i still can't really handle the texture of a thickly sliced raw tomato it freaks me out it's slimy i don't like it i don't want it on my burger my sandwich ever so a caprese if given to me i'll just eat the fucking cheese and the basil which makes me look like a, so you're a little baby <laughs> I, lo- I look like a little baby a little <laughs> stupid idiot baby and that's just embarrassing so even though I'm kind of against also putting, like, an ungodly amount of shit on your fucking hamburger, like, why is there a ball of deep-fried mac and cheese on here? I'm gonna kill myself. But I'll pick the rodeo burger, because I, I like some barbecue on occasion. Onion rings, whatever. That's fine. I was gonna say, is there, like, a standard cowboy burger? I'm just seeing that there's crispy I, onions and barbecue sauce on it. Yeah, it's, it's onion, it's rings, onion and rings and barbecue sauce. sauce. I yeah. don't really love barbecue sauce, honestly, which is a real problem for me, because that limits um, any consumption of barbecue food that I eat. <laughs> BBQ. Um, <laughs> um, so I'm gonna go, and especially, like, a sauce. Like, if it's actually, like, proper barbecue, I feel like the ratio is decent. Um, but if you're throwing it on a burger, odds are it's going to be, like, a lot. Um, I like a caprese salad, though, because I have big kid taste buds. 
<laughs> no, I'm kidding. That's fair. I feel like I just came around to tomatoes within the last, like, two, or, like, raw tomatoes in the last two years. Yeah, I'm going to go with the caprese also. I love caprese salad. Just a fresh basil. Ooh. Next one is a romesco sauce or pesto. All right, tell me about romesco. Jen. I was going to say, what Let's is that? Here. Red it's pesto? Like a, it's like a tomato cream sauce. With, with, um, it's a little bit spicy. I don't know. I, uh, considering, I mean, I know a vodka sauce. I know a cream sauce. I do not know Romesco. I, I have not familiarized myself with her. And perhaps we can get acquainted down the line. But I put pesto on fucking everything. Ugh. I love me some pesto. Yeah, absolutely. I'm so on that wave. It just looks like a tomato sauce, really. Yeah, it's a, yeah. it's a tomato and garlic. That's that's sauce. all. That's red that's sauce. All sauce. Yeah, uh, roasted red peppers. Sorry. Uh, okay, sure. I like roasted red peppers, but not as much as I like pesto and you know a fresh basil. I love to make my own whenever I can, but that requires me having like a bonus for my work so that I can buy pine nuts. Yeah. <laughs> you should take out a small business loan, <laughs> literally, to to acquire some pine nuts. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Insane. Do you have to go pine nuts on your pesto, or can you go walnuts? No, but unfortunately, I do think they turn out the best. I've done them with, like, um, pepitas yeah. and, like, sunflower nuts or whatever the fuck you... Are those pepitas? I don't know. Um, but, yeah, I've done them with a couple of different things. Um, you can do it with walnuts, I guess, which is pretty good, but... Um. I will. I'll go over Masco just because I wrote that because I think I went somewhere and got a dish with Romesco sauce and it was wicked good. Uh, last one: shawarma, falafel, or tabbouleh. Oh, Ooh, I love falafel. I love me a falafel. I also love how filling it is. You have like a little fucking pita pocket with some falafels, and you get to one falafel, and then you get through one falafel, and you're like, dude, I'm fucking done. I'm full of shit. Yeah. This thing has got, oh, just like a good pita with, I know you said falafel is its own choice, but I'm choosing a fully loaded pita with like pickled red onions oh. and like hummus mm. and the, yes. Little that's sauce. What I want. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, oh, the white garlic the white sauce. sauce. Tomb. The fuck that tomb. is. Oh. Mm. Yeah. The white garlic sauce is called tomb. T-O-O-M. Wow. Okay. Um, shout out to my partner, Maya, who's Lebanese and has showed me so much Mediterranean food in the last, like, year and a half. Ooh. Dude, halloumi cheese, bro. Love halloumi cheese. Oh, my God. They've got halloumi? me making my own, like, lebne and everything like that in the mm. fridge. I, yeah. But, um, I... I'm gonna have to go for a shawarma. Um, because, like, sticking a couple of fries in it, too. Ooh. Oh! My God! The fries, the fries from the Mediterranean places are always... The crispy fries, the fries that have eczema, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah! Oh, that's the best kind of french fry. When it's a little flaky. Yeah, when it's yeah, a yeah, little, yeah. Mm. She hasn't moisturized in like two weeks. <laughs> what about you, Jen? Um, I am going to go with the falafel. Shout out to Erin, who got us all, got me into falafel. But I do love tabbouleh, though. I really do. Tabbouleh is pretty hit or miss for me. Yeah. I don't think it stands on its own. But, mm. um, but, but like, as a little, like, side dish, it's, yeah. like, the perfect, like, crisp and bright yeah. little Maybe, like, on snack. my falafel wrap, I'll take Woo! it. Yeah. You're crazy. Mm. <laughs> but that's it for We're All Hungry. <laughs> I could go for, like, another 20 minutes doing this. <laughs> oh. Thank you, Jen. Just, You're just welcome. Through, through all the foods. Thank you so much. Uh, we love you. Thank you for being here, asking us questions, and we will see you next week. Okay. Love you. Have a good night. Bye. Bye. Um, <clears throat> we asked for a handful of questions from people yes. today. Do you want to just jump into some of the best ones that we've got? I would love to do that. And thank you all for those who wrote yes. in. We were like, this movie's boring as fuck, and I don't want to just be a hater and complain about it. But yeah, I'd rather, like, like talk like, to you let's, guys. Let's talk about some other stuff this week. Okay. Um, since we've talked about boring lesbians for the last 30 minutes, um, who's your favorite lesbian icon in history, if you have one? Jodie Foster. This is from... Oh, yeah. This is from Fifth underscore Ray. 
Um, Bright, Jodie Foster, Shout that's out. a good one. That's that was just that was my first thought. Let me like mm, let me think about this. Um, obviously, right now, Chapel Roan. Um, Queen. It's a great time to be living in this generation and this time. Mm-hmm. Um, I am a big Frida Kahlo person, but I hate to say it because she's been like monetized. Um, but I do think she was a, br- a brilliant queer um, and like girl out- boss. L- basically, <laughs> yeah. But I mean, she was very loud about it, you know? Um, mm-hmm. I also think um, the. Um, Ann Lister, who the show Gentleman Jack is based off of, was pretty badass. Um, if you haven't oh, ever watched that this. show, she was like a wealthy Englishman, basically. And she like girl bossed her way around town and started her own businesses and things like that when in a time where it wasn't, you know, okay to. Um, and she had plenty of girlfriends. I don't know enough about it. I only ever watched, like, the first season of the show, and I've read a bit about her in, like, some books, mm-hmm. but pretty cool stuff. I'm gonna, I'm gonna top this off. Rosie yeah. O'Donnell. Oh! Oh, Rosie O'Donnell specifically in A League of Their Own for me. Uh, no, Rosie O'Donnell specifically getting kicked off of The View for speaking out against the war in Iraq. That's... That's my queen right there. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. Love, That's a good love one. Love me some Rosie O'Donnell. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. That's all I've got at the moment. I'm trying to think of any other lesbians that I would absolutely die for, but... Not enough. Not enough. Not enough lesbians, just in general, you know? Yeah, but I want more of let's them. Get the, let's get those numbers up. Yeah. Um, let's see. Um... Mickey Fozzy asked if we would ever do a live watch along slash watch party, which I'm glad to I'm glad to see that people are interested because we did this like two three years ago. Yeah, we did. It was a flop, Tina. Yeah, we did one for um, Rocky Horror on. It wasn't the day wasn't Halloween, but we did it like around Halloween time, and our our live streams kept getting taken down for like copyrighted content Uh because we were literally just streaming the actual movie. Because I'm like, how can we have a watch party without the movie showing the movie? But I think that there are applications where you can, it's called, like, Netflix Watch Party or whatever, where you can, like, all, like, you oh, stream cool. the movie and you can all, like, be in, like, a chat room or something. I could oh, look into fun. it and see, because if there's interest, I, w- I would love to do a little watch party with y'all. I think this relates good to another question that was asked about, um, like, having a themed live show. Re- yes, 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 yes. Um, I, yeah, the question was asked by... The Ava Madison. Oh, no. That's drag names. Sorry. We'll get back to that one. Um, Kai Urata Espinosa. Um, if you could have a themed concert like Chapel, um, what would your theme be? Um, yes, I would love a theme a lot. Oh, if the Swamp ever did a tour. Are you fucking kidding? Love. If we, if we hit the tour on all of the hotspots of where my data says uh-huh. that our listeners are, we'd be going to Washington State. Love, Hell yeah. Ohio, and love. the UK. And those would be our three our three little stoppies. Yeah. Um, I would love to do a, a live swamp party, and we're all going to get dressed up. I think swamp itself is a good theme. Yeah. Come, like, covered in bogs and just, like, green face paint, mm-hmm. like, looking like old Greg. Absolutely. Like, I think that would be fire. <laughs> my other... My other thoughts were um, dress as your sexual awakening movie character. Yep. Obviously, it's very funny as yep. we have done that as a theme, especially if, like, what we are talking about related to that. I think yeah. everyone coming as their sexual awakening would be funny. I think that I would be good. Think- I said that um, I think dress as, like, one of your favorite, like, iconic characters or something like mm-hmm. that. I want, like, a costume party, basically. Yeah. Like, fully Halloween. I would love yeah. just a big old Halloween party. My other one was, like, early 2000s like Disney Channel original movie <gasps> premiere runway. Stop. Like oh, very much like Ash- like Ashley Tisdale, like in that like pajama uh-huh. set that she wore for no reason. Like wear like jeans with a skirt over yeah. it. And then like a tube top with a long sleeve t shirt and like just bad early two thousands like teen fashion, I think would be a lot of fun. That's fabulous. I would also love to see people just dress up as us. 
Oh my god. I think because it's audio, I don't know if people have a great sense of, like, mm. what we dress like day to day. Also, if you're on the Patreon and you watch, I'm, like, in my PJs every single week. <laughs> I wish I had the energy to get dolled up for y'all, mm-hmm. but not enough <laughs> Not enough <laughs> Patreon inco- income is uh, mm-hmm. making me put mascara on, so. Yeah. Um... Yeah, or dress as, like, your childhood self. That's always a good one. Something like oh that. Oh, my God. Yeah, um, but speaking of old- speaking of gay awakenings, though, um, Zoe is Fine um, asked what our gay awakenings were. And we definitely Ooh. talked about this a bit last year. Um, and I do have to come clean because I used to always say that it was Natalie Portman in the Star Wars movies as a child. Mm-hmm. Um, but it wasn't. It was Natalie Portman with the tiny little pixie cut in Mr. Megorium's Magic Emporium. (laughs) Oh my god, I don't even know what that is. I don't know either, but I was eight years old and I saw it and, you know. Oh my god. I do feel like when we were at the ages of, like, eight to twelve, it was a really huge time for, like, mega celebrity women to, like, get pixie cuts. Why do I feel like that was, like, a big thing of them all, like, chopping all their hair off? I I think a lot of them did it for roles, though, because I know Natalie Mm -hmm. did it for fucking... Oh, God, what is it? Um, she shaved her head. Oh, V for Vendetta. Yes, yes, that. Um, and then, like... like, uh, Emma Watson did it for fucking not Harry Potter, whatever it was. Something. I have... Yeah, for Person Being a Wallflower, and Hathaway did it for Les Mis... Yep, yep. Yeah, all but that. But it was very, yeah, like, I feel like Jennifer Lawrence got a little... She like, did, too, I forget, point. yeah. Like, Katy Perry did it. I feel oh, like yeah. there was just a, a hot period of time where women just be cutting their hair. Mm-hmm. And I feel like as a as a young, questioning person, that could be like, whoa. Like, okay, she's got short hair now, that's nuts. Yeah, like, <laughs> Alice's pixie cut in Twilight was already, like, hot. really pushing it for some girls. Mm-hmm. It gave them a little too much inspiration. I'm gonna say uh, the the fairy from Fern Gully is so stupid, dummy thick, <laughs> and I just remember that was yeah. really doing it for me. She's like in this little scoochy little red dress, and she's just like a hot little uh-huh. fairy who's just like saving the environment. Oh, so good. I'll have to look it up. I have no recollection. Also, very much like those those Disney movies, like Atlantis and yeah. Treasure Planet, and there were always just like side female characters that were just like way hotter than they needed to be. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, our lovely darling, dear friend Joey, sent in the question: um, What kind of moan turns you off? <laughs> Um, I feel, I feel like not a moan so much as like a, as like an attempt at dirty talk that gives me the ache. It's mm. like any sort of infantilization, especially like oh, in, disgusting. in movies, like in movies when, or like TV, when the guy's supposed to be like, you know, really domineering and like yeah. he's like really be, trying to be sexy and he calls her like little girl or yeah. something. Oh, nothing makes my skin crawl faster than just, like... What's that stupid-ass TikTok sound? And it's, like, the next words out of your mouth better be, yes, sir. Is that clear? It's like, yes, sir. It says, now ass up, baby girl. Get out of my... Baby girl, too. No. Oh, I just... It's not for me. I get that it can be for you, but it's not for me. I don't want a man to ever tell me what to do. And I don't ever want to call... A man, sir, or daddy, or anything like that. Um, no. Calling your girlfriend, you as a queer woman, calling your girlfriend daddy, that's different. Yeah. I'm here that for works. that. Absolutely mm-hmm. pro, pro daddy, your big titty mask girlfriend. Yes. Please. Um, but yeah, baby yeah, girl, that freaks Ooh. me out. Um, I hate the, the really high pitch, like, porn actress moan. I think that's yeah. just pretty standard, but it's like the, yeah. <laughs> the <laughs> I'm like, is my fire alarm going off? Exactly. Like, is my is my carbon monoxide? Yeah. Like, Which, let me check that. Obviously, like I think that's no one actually. If you do moan li- like that, if that's what your I'm voice so sounds sorry. like, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> But like I'm thankful that I've never I'm thankful I've never actually like witnessed that. Um, if that's because what your voice sounds like, then shut the fuck <laughs> up. 
Then keep that shit to For yourself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then here's a <laughs> here's a link to ball gags. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> but like obviously it's performative half of the time yeah. and yeah, I think that's that's another thing that would have my pussy zip itself up. I have been watching Bridgerton, obviously, as everyone yeah. else has been, but I'm on the um the Queen Charlotte show. <gasps> you started right it? Now. I started it and there's a lot of men whimpering in that show. Oh, I love that, it. I was like I was like fully like watching it, being like, this is kind of softcore porn. How far like, into it are you, like when he's like we, trying to fix his we just discovered that he has a few screws loose okay. where I'm at. Okay. Is that he loves the moon a little too much <laughs> is the part yeah, that I'm at. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. So you got past all, like, the hot sex, though. Yeah, yeah. That now was great. Mentally Ill. Now it's just going to be really sad, I think. It is. It was, it was very horny for, like, two episodes, and I was like, damn, he, damn, he be whimpering. Like, right, yeah, absolutely. And I love that. Make men t- whimper. Again. Yeah, exactly. A scary man, grunt, horrifying. Also horrifying. You can do a sexy man grunt, but a scary one, if you're a little too (laughs) into it, mm. (laughs) If you're a little too into busting a nut, like just straight up busting a nut, (laughs) then that's a little too much. If you have something in your butt, then that's a whole different ball game. (laughs) Yeah. Then you can, okay, make, can we get the context? You I need can the make, context for the moan. <laughs> so I can judge if it. you have something in your ass as a man, you're allowed to make whatever sounds you want. But That's if you're true. like doing scary grunts, like just nutting from <laughs> jerking it, from jorking if it. A, if a book mm-mm. is describing um, his grunts as being animalistic, then that's a hard note for Yeah, me. hard pass. We're people. <laughs> <laughs> um... I guess in a similar vein. Um, what's the um um who is this? Rachel Neff. Um, uh, what is the gayest thing you have ever done? Also, happy pride. Happy pride. Happy Probably pride, rock Rachel. climbing. Yeah, that's pretty gay of you. Yeah, probably like a rock climbing solely with another woman like mm. like doing like dual stretches and like she was my my friend Rachel, she was single at the time. She was like, yeah, like what are we, like, these hot rock climbing boys? I was like, dude, they all think we're lesbians because we show up together in a Subaru. Yeah. We do dual stretches and then we belay each other and, like, <laughs> no, that's, there's nothing gayer than that. I'm sorry. <laughs> I would say that the straightest thing um, is not that I'm married to a man, but it's that I have no tattoos. Oh, gay people have tattoos. That is very straight of you. I could never be. I can never be mistaken for despite think, the wolf cut and the you know the, the no, whole presentation. I have no tattoos. I think that having it's... like an, uh, a myriad of medical issues gives you enough gay credit, though. <laughs> I feel Thanks. like that's it makes gay. up for my no piercings, no tattoos. It makes but sense. I, I saw a um, TikTok that somebody was like, "Oh yeah, I was on like the dating apps as like T for T," and somebody thought it meant tattoos for tattoos because like. All, all queer and trans people just have fucking tattoos. Oh my god. Um, I think the gayest thing that I've ever done, besides, you know... Yeah, you know. Be gay, um, is probably when I was, like, five years old, I was going to... Um, I went to Halloween dressed up as, like, a prince with a little sword yeah. and all the little... There's a great photo of me hanging out there in the ether. Um, of, like, all the little girls in their, um, princess dresses. And I'm sitting there in, like, a tunic with a sword and a shield and a little hat. (laughs) Not a tunic. (laughs) Oh, yeah. (laughs) Not the prince and the pauper over here. Oh, Oh, my God. I was in it, dude. You were also Obi-Wan Kenobi, right? I was Obi-Wan Kenobi. I was... A skater, like a busted up skater. I was Love. a ninja. That one I remember loving mm-hmm. specifically. But yeah, little yeah, five, super like gay. preschool Emily as a prince. And I'm sitting there Dude. 10 years later looking at my mom like, how did you not know? Yeah. <laughs> You're shocked. Yeah, right? <laughs> Look at me. Ah, I wore <laughs> ties to my yearbook photos. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Um, um, also, do you have a drag name? That's what, um, the Ava oh. Madison was asking. I don't have a drag I, name. I have two. Okay. I have two. Okay. I have my, my drag king persona yeah. is named Oscar Snub. 
and I uh, <laughs> only I only do the monologue from the social network where Andrew Garfield the, the fuck you flip flops yeah. monologue. I only do that's my one my one trick. And my name is Oscar Snub. And then my, I guess you could say more drag queen, but I, this does also feel somewhat gender neutral. Um, anamorph, and I dress up only as Stop. the the mid the, on the cover, like whatever the mid morphed version is. That's what I do my drag on. So I'm like a half girl, half dolphin abomination. <laughs> anamorph. Uh, that's Damn, that's so good. <laughs> those are my two, you know, my one trick pony drag personas, which of course, if I were to do drag, it would be a very it would have to be something so niche. Cause I'm not getting up there and doing the splits. No ma'am. Um, I love that. For a while for a while I rocked um I wanted to be Ashley Home Furniture. I don't know <laughs> if that's if it's a regional thing, but we have like a chain of furniture stores around here called Ashley Home Furniture, mm-hmm. and I just thought that, that was really cunty. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't have one, so you which could, is ooh, boring be to like me. As a drag king, you could be like a towny Boston dude bro named Duncan. That oh, would be funny. Oh yeah. That's a good I'm one. Duncan, like a I like Ben that. Affleck. I um, like that. Um that's mostly it. Um Maya asked what it's like to suffer from same sex attraction. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um one more th- actually. Um we'll end on um another um Queer icon note. Um, what's your fave Chapel Roan song? Asks. Oh! Hi, I'm Tough. Harper. Tough. I do really like um, Super Graphic Ultra Modern Girl. Yeah. Is a top for me. Mm-hmm. I also... Um, Red Wine Supernova is another classic. Oh, and Pink Pony Club. Fuck. Now I'm just naming them all. Mm-hmm. Fuck. Uh, I... I don't like the sad ones as much. I like the girly no. pop ones. Yeah, obviously. Um, unfortunately, I do have to say I think Hot to Go is mine. Mm. There is nothing that gets me going, like walking into work and turning that song on. It, I feel things that I haven't felt, like childlike wonder that I haven't had since I was seven years old. Yeah, being at, uh, I got to see her live recently, oh. which was a lot of fun. It was hot, it was crowded, uh-huh. and it was... It was physically oppressive conditions, mm-hmm. but seeing her was very fun. And being in a thousands and thousands of crowd all doing hot to go, I was like, wow, I love that the it pop girl right now is really just like know, truly talking brilliant. about eating pussy in the fucking Toyota Corolla, it's making us all. Making us all work for it and dance. I'm obsessed with her. I, I do. Love, I love that she um she said no to going to the White House Fuck at yeah. Govball. I'm obsessed. Uh, the I the Govball fit was insane. Everything. Yeah, I'm so glad someone is bringing camp back in this way. Um, yes. I also do love Naked in Manhattan. That is mm. that one gets me going as well. Um. There's not many to choose from because she's no. only got one fucking album and they're all straight bangers. bangers. It's wild. Mm-hmm. Um, do you want to get into our regularly scheduled oh, programming? Yeah, about this movie we didn't even talk about. I'm so glad you asked. Mm-hmm. I'm so glad all of you are still listening. Hey, wow. Uh, what? Who are we going to fuck, Mary kill? Let's do it between heck. Yeah. Rachel and Luce. I'm going to um, kill Rachel, honestly, because there's nothing there for me. There's Fuck nothing her, there yeah. that I want to um, nope. explore. I'm going to kill her. I'll fuck Heck, because at least he can, like, get his rocks off. Sure. And then I'll, I guess I'll marry Luce, because I think the idea of having a lesbian flower shop with my wife sounds fun. Yeah, except that has to be the least profitable flower shop in the whole oh, goddamn yeah. universe. She is such an irresponsible business owner. Terrible. Every, every scene we get, she either is shoving someone out of her store... Yeah. Or giving them something for free so that they'll stop talking to her. We had never see her beginning to close, finish a business transaction. That register? Dusty. Empty. <laughs> That's what what kind of... And she's, like, out here living with her mom. Like, we don't really get an insight into any sort of financial struggle. But it's, like, what? you Just make better business choices, you fucking idiot. Yeah. Anyways, I, I'll be Hex Rebound. Nice. And I will be upfront about what's going on. And mm-hmm. I feel like Heck is a good enough communicator that we could make it work. You mm-hmm. know, I can help him write his bullshit little travel book. Um, who, you know, who cares? I'll fuck Lena Headey, obviously, and I'm not oh, yeah. Rachel. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Um, 
I don't even have anything good to eat or drink with this movie. I'm going to tell you to punish yourself for picking a bland movie. I'm going to tell you to make the saddest fucking charcuterie board, which is just going to be like Cabot Sharp Cheddar Cheese and Ritz Crackers and a bottle of Prosecco because you need a whole bottle to get through yeah. this. That actually That's sounds like a nice little snack, though. You said oh, yeah. it's bland, but I would still... It's just, like, the blandest that you can get yeah. for, like, a white people movie. You no, know? no fake jam. No nothing. salami. No. No, no, nothing. Cheese, I cracker, actually, that's it. Mine is actually, and do you have a drink? Oh, yeah, a whole bottle just a, of Prosecco. Yeah, just a bottle of Prosecco. Yeah. Love that. Um, I think that you should do a wedding cake tasting. I don't know if you... You're being very kind to your um, your viewers. I You don't have to do it for real, because I think if you like, call a bakery and ask them to do it, or if they have like preset ones online, I bet they're expensive as fuck. Absolutely. So my version... My version of this is that you just go to the grocery store and they have like individual size, like personal size, like cakes. Mm-hmm. And just buy like three. Yeah. Just do a, a German chocolate, a cheesecake, or whatever, and pretend I think that's you're fabulous. Fucking, you, pretend you're wedding cake testing because I think that that would be fun. I like that. And then there's that scene where she's like reaching into the punch to try to help her get her ring. Sure. And it's like a vaguely like purplish looking yeah. liquid. So I took that piece of visual information and then the fact that this movie is about a florist and has a lot to do with flowers and the meanings of flowers and the, all that. So I was like, what's a, a floral drink that looks purple? Done. We're going to do a... Um, What's it fucking called? A lavender paloma. Oh, that and this sounds, sounds nice. t- to me, this sounds awful. These are two things I hate. I hate grapefruit. floral. I hate I hate grapefruit and I hate floral flavors. But I'm thinking maybe they'd pemdas out, and then I would probably be into not. It. <laughs> I think you or it would it. be awful. But so it's a Which either it's lavender are good for this lavender simple syrup, grapefruit juice, mezcal, and then you muddle up some lavender and some with sea salt mezcal meat. too. That's and, crazy. And you do the little rim. I don't know, man. It felt right. And lavenders also mean lesbian, right? Yes. That's a thing. Yeah, lavender, lavender menace. So that's a lavender paloma. I think would go nicely with this film. And yeah, I guess just bring some fucking spice to this to this movie that yeah. was nothing. Um. Follow-up movie, I'm going to tell you to watch the new um, Tig Nick Taro, Stephanie Allen uh, film, Am I Okay?, starring Dakota Johnson, um, which is about, um, like, a 32-year-old woman kind of figuring out her sexuality. Um, I haven't actually watched it yet, but I fucking love Tig Nick Taro. Um, I'm a huge fan. Um, not that they need any promo, but they have this amazing podcast with Mae Martin and Fortune Famester um, called Handsome. And I'm obsessed with it. It's the only other pod besides, like, The Bald and the Beautiful and this sometimes that I'll listen to. Uh, Ew. You listen to this podcast, bro? I listen for... No, I used to, honestly, to, like, listen back and hear what we said. Um, and then I'm like, oh, this is not good for me. These mind. days? Yeah, no, never. Probably it's been, like, two years since I've actually listened back, just even to find a TikTok audio. Um, but, yeah, Am I Okay? It has been getting really great reviews. I lied, it's been getting decent reviews so far. <laughs> it's at, like, a three. But I mean, I've heard I'm, of it, but I didn't know it was available yet. I didn't I'm, know it was. I'm really out. interested to watch it. Um, so we'll see. What about you? I think you should watch another movie about a woman who is married who is leaving for someone else to pursue lesbianism, and I think you should watch Carol. Oh. Uh, and I think that that's just one that you can root for a little more. Always. You know, you're like, yeah, you're like, fuck that guy. It's pretty. Just, like yeah, I, I can right. I can at least understand like them never having a conversation and being attracted to each other. You know what I mean? Like the mm-hmm. draw is there. Fuck Carol's all so good. Classic, timeless yeah. lesbian. Um, my other my other recommendation was that if you wanted a lesbian piece of media that just does generally feel a little more happy and not so depressing is San Junipero, the Black Mirror. Classic. Episode. We covered forever ago. It is, it does have, of course, that more emotional twist to it, but it is, like, ultimately a queer love story about two women that does have a generally happy ending, Mm -hmm. which is, like, not very common, but this one's, like, actually is interesting and has a plot, so I would also go for that one. But mostly Carol. I think you should watch Carol. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a great one. And what would you rate this? I'll give it a three. Two. 
at two, I feel no need yeah. to ever think about this movie again. Yeah, this no. Was this really one's bad. Get, this isn't even going in the filing cabinet. It's going right in the shredder. This is bad. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I get why it exists and why it's there and why it may be did what it did, but I do, I don't need it in my life. Um, we've moved on. We have yeah. bigger and better things. And Lena Headey has far other greater content for me to consume. Yes. To Thank worship God. her. Yes. Yeah. But that's it. And oh my gosh. Wow. Here we are at the end of the episode for me to say all the things about wrapping <laughs> up. Please, please, please. Please give us stars. Please, a star. Please, but maybe five. please, please. Please, can I give me a star? Uh, five <laughs> stars, please, if you could do that. Uh, whatever app you're listening on to, um, a review, if you would be so kind. All the links to everything is in the description below of our social medias. If you want to recommend better gay rom-coms please. to us for us to cover. I'm scared about our lineup. We're fucking struggling over here, so... We're picking bombs lately. If you, if you have ideas for this month theme, but also any, a whole theme, just an individual movie you'd like us to talk about, sometimes we just pull from the list, we'll do yeah. listener rec, just anything that you like that you think we might like or that you think would be interesting for us to chat about. We'd love to hear from you guys, any of the places. I think you can text us now, actually, which is wild. There's this link, um, our distributor just added this new feature where it, we now have like an inbox and I believe at the bottom in the description it'll just say like text us and you can just click that link and it'll give you like an SMS um, and it'll just sick. send it to us. Yeah, which is crazy. If you want to be the first person to do that, nobody's done it Love. yet because I haven't really talked about it. But yeah, we also have an email. We have, you know, DMs and all of that stuff. You don't have, you know, we don't have to be friends like that. If you want to keep this parasocial relationship at a distance, you don't have to text me. You can just email me. Mm-hmm. I, we can keep it profesh, you know? Mm-hmm. I understand that. Um, and happy Pride, everyone. Yeah. Sorry, we're only talking about god fucking awful movies, but hopefully we'll, we'll be on the mend. Um, we're trying. Check out... If you want to check out our Patreon, we do bonus content uh, over there. We talk about extra new movies, uh, one episode per month. We talked about the new movie Furiosa and Mad Max Free Your Road pretty recently. If you want to listen to that over there, link in the description. And that's all we really have to say. Yeah. Thank you to those who wrote in for questions. You are the yes. best. Thank you for providing us with material to actually talk about this week because clearly uh, this movie Had did nothing. not. Yeah. Uh, happy Pride. Thank you for listening. Yeah. Goodbye. And good night.